buddy boy He would wake up everyone Rise and rejoice to the name of Oh fool, now I shall make you renounce my name. See, this is the thing. The real, the real empowered devotee causes the false, the false uh, representatives to renounce the, the name. They see, they're taking the, they say, I can deliver you. I have the name of Krishna. See, they don't, they have the, they say they have the power of Krishna invested in them, but they really don't. See, so they have to renounce that. And they're caused by when somebody actually is authorized here, they see a spiritual power that they cannot compete with. And then they renounce that, hopefully. <laughs> See, they can't, they can't give you the real name, man. That's why it says you've got to hear the name from a devotee, a, a spiritual master, right? They say that you hear the name from them, then, and that's supposed to produce the result of bhakti. But it, it, if, it, if you're hearing the name from people, and it's not moving you to the spiritual bat platform, see? The name is also the Bhagavatam. That's what it says. It doesn't just say you hear the name, chanting Hare Krishna. If you chant Hare Krishna with offenses, you're not really hearing the name yet. And if, the, if you're hearing it from a devotee who chants with offenses, you haven't really heard the name even from him. Okay? But if you hear the name from a devotee who chants the holy names with great ecstasy and bliss and like that, now you're getting initiated in the transcendental sound vibration. See, it has that, that effect. You've got to go beyond this external thing. These persons, if they're not chanting the holy name in ecstasy, they're not spiritual master in our Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Right? You know, they've got to have a transcendental sound vibration. So uh, people are accepting all this pomp and votes and all that. That is, that is for fools. Okay? This is not God. We have, we have everything in our books. Everything we're teaching here is from the books. Don't, why are you looking for uh, people who don't chant the transcendental sound vibration? And proof of that is, is what the books teach. Those who do, they laugh, they cry, their voice chokes in emotion. They have real symptoms of ecstatic love. And then to prove it, they have real knowledge of those books written by persons who don't speculate. And then you could see they're not speculating. Their hearts are honestly purified by ecstatic worship. They're not sahaja. You see how we teach intelligence here? See, a person just, oh, he's sahaja, without looking at well, I say, well, if he's sahaja, why has he, why has he got such good knowledge? That's as it is in the book. Sahajas who shouldn't have anything. They're lying and cheating you. Actually, the real sahaja is anybody sits on the seat of, of an authority, uh, the vyasa son, and says, I'm guru, but doesn't have ecstatic love and can't deliver you, but they say they can. That's sahaja, isn't it? You're acting on a platform you're not really truly on. Not a person who chants the the holy name and with genuine ecstatic love and then proves it by their knowledge of Shastra as it is. See, the real, the real devotee, like Prabhupada, their words as it is, it's checkable. Eh? Just like Prabhupada said, you know, he wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is. Why? Because he worshipped the Lord with ecstatic love. You see how he fit the book Bhagavad? You see how the real successor has to fit the same thing? They have to also and see things as they are. And you can check it. Well, God, you know it's as it is. And these guys are lying. You can actually see they're defeated. If anybody's saying they're still guru, after you hear a class like this, then you can check in the books that they believe in, supposedly, but they don't understand because they got to hear from a, a person who worships the Lord with ecstatic love. Like Prabhupada did, like Bhakti Sanatha, Bhakti Vinod. You notice they all do that. Then now, if there's going to be any successor, they got to do the same thing. Well, do you see that same thing happening here? Provable? It's logical, isn't it?
Am I saying anything that is so difficult to understand? See, the real philosophy of Krishna consciousness is very, it's transcendentally logical. It has to be delivered by a whole person. It's, it's, it's sharp discernment, very clear. See, and, and when you find the devotee that is actually fitting that uh, book Bhagavad description, then, you, then, then everything fits into place. See? Faith in that devotee man, all of a sudden, if you really have firm faith in such devotee, you'll go over all these, this, these problems of the mind, you transcend material duality, you start to see bliss everywhere. You see that already happening. And when that becomes your experience, then you can be a preacher, a real preacher. These people can't bamboozle you nothing, and you see where they're coming from. You're safe now. That's Majjhimadikari. You might have not all the Shastras and everything, but you just keep listening and then you can study yourself now because everything becomes revealed because you have firm faith in a real guru, a real acharya, a real spiritual master and Krishna. They fulfilled the formula, therefore the purports are automatically revealed.